welcome to the Victor's Podcast. My name is Dr. Lisa Marino, and I'm here with Aaron Hazelbaker. And uh, we're excited to have Debbie Cowden here. Debbie yeah. is um, a senior digital, digital media specialist um, and also a co-host for EWTN. So thanks so much for being here, Debbie. Thank you for having me. Yes. I'm so excited to talk to you today. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the chit chat was um, already starting to get too interesting. We had to convert over and start recording because just so much to talk about. And Debbie's going to share about her book. Um, it's called The Prayer Book for Tired Parents. And, you know, we just, case in point, Aaron has brought baby Gus here. Like, we are all just tired parents. <laughs> That's right. But, you know, I think, and we'll get into this, and Debbie, you're going to share a little bit about, you know, why you decided to write this book. I mean, um, we, you know, it's easy to get stuck, and especially when you're tired, you're exhausted, you're not thinking straight, and it's like, we know we need to pray, we know that we're struggling, you know, it's hard to find peace, um, and we're so busy, but um, how can I do that? And, and so that's what we're really here to talk about today. Um, but first, um, I would love Debbie to just kind of share a little bit about her story, um, and I'll kind of just introduce, it's pretty cool, Debbie's actually from our area. She's um, a graduate of Lima Central Catholic um, and still lives here in Dayton uh, with her husband, David, and their three kids. And um, so she's still able to work for EWTN, um, even being up here um, in Dayton. And so do you mind sharing a little bit about, um, you know, what the inspiration was to write the book? Yeah, it really was a prompting of the Holy Spirit. Dave and I had been married at that point for about six years. We had three kids already, and we were just going through the motions of being Catholic. And we had made a lot of excuses for why we couldn't do more, especially in light of the pandemic, because you, we were both working full-time jobs and there's a global pandemic happening and we've got three kids and we can't go to daily mass and do X, Y, and Z. And sometimes the family rosary isn't going to happen. We were making all of these excuses and really what it boiled down to, we realized was that we just weren't trying yeah. hard enough. And for, for other tired parents who are listening, yeah. you might be saying, well, I am trying. And our call to holiness is, especially as parents, is one that requires extra effort. And sometimes it requires some creativity too. But no matter your vocation in life, you're called to love God the most. You're called to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world so that you can be happy with him forever in heaven. And what we realized was that we weren't really putting enough effort into knowing God. We weren't really trying to love him as best as we could, because if you love somebody, you're going to try to spend more time with them. You are going to get to know them. You're going to give them your heart and make sacrifices for them, and you're going to serve them too. So when we realized that we were lacking in that department and, and that was affecting our kids' spirituality, we realized, well, we really need to step up. And from there and with the prompting of the Holy Spirit, we, we just recognized that uh, this was something that was important for us to do for ourselves. And in having conversations with other fellow tired parents, we realized it was something that they needed too. Absolutely right, Gus. It is what they need. <laughs> and, you know, we tried to put it off for a while because, again, those excuses were tired parents. There's no way that we can write a book. I remember praying, Jesus, if you want this to happen, you're going to have to blow open the doors because I'm not going to fight for it because I'm a tired parent and I do not have time to write a book. And he blew open those doors and he just paved the way for us to be able to bring the truth of our Catholic faith and bring the truth about our call to holiness to parents now all around the world. And it's been spectacular, the response that we've heard. Like parents are saying that they feel like this book was written just for them. And we have moms who are saying that by page five, they were crying because they felt like they, they're they heard and that they're seen. And you know, it's really easy to get to get stuck, like to turn in on yourself and to say, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a stay at home mom or I'm a working mom and I feel like nobody gets what I'm going through and I'm doing my best and nothing that I do is good enough. And it is, it is, and we don't want you to be stuck. And so mm -hmm. we try to offer these practical steps so that parents can take where they are in their life right now and they can say, God, I wanna do a little bit more for you. Not just so that I can say that I did it, but because I really wanna love you more because I realized that that's the ultimate goal. And we can go into a lot of detail about everything that's yeah, in the book. Well, yeah. It's 350 pages, there's a lot there. Yeah, well, I think what really spoke to me just about what you were saying, because I think we've all kind of been in that phase where um, it's almost like you're going through the motions, right? But then what we realize at some point, you know, we hope we realize it sooner rather than later, but just like you said, we're reflecting this on our children, right? And so if our goal is to be closer to God, our goal is also to make sure that our children are having a relationship with the Lord. And, and so then when we 
are stuck and just not, you know, making those right choices or just saying, oh, I'm just going through the motions, then that that's really what resonates with me because it's like, you're right now I'm reflecting that to my children. Like, oh, it's okay to skip or it's okay to avoid these things or it's okay. Oh yeah, we had a crazy day so we can, you know, avoid, you know, getting to mass or we can avoid, you know, saying that rosary or doing those, you know, extra prayers, etc. So, I mean, I think that's what really speaks to me about what you were saying. Saying. And there and there is something to be said about, you know, not always feeling like uh, you're you're super close to God. And so you, you pray the rosary, even though you're not really feeling it. Mm -hmm. And there's something mm -hmm. to be said about that obedience, because it is very good. And Our Lady sure. says, pray the rosary every day to bring peace to the world. What we recognize, though, is that the more we do those acts of service and the more we try to incorporate the family rosary, individual prayer time, prayer time together as a family, going to mass and going to adoration, receiving the sacraments, the more we do those things out of love for God, even when it doesn't feel good, the more graces we receive. And it's like it's like when you're tired and you don't want to work out, but working out is going to give you the energy later on. So you, you do that that act of obedience right now. And, and it can be hard at first, especially if your family isn't used to praying together, or mm -hmm. if you have young kids like under the age of one and you're like, we can barely get through mass on Sunday. Why would we bring our kids to daily mass too? And that was something that we struggled with, especially after the pandemic. Like we were to the point where we were thinking, are we just gonna have to go to mass separately? Because our kids cannot sit still in the pews. They cannot make it through an hour mass. But then we started making the time to go to daily mass and we realized, okay, there are fewer distractions. So our kids <laughs> our kids can see what's going on. It's a shorter mass. They can, they can sit up close if they need to. And then they're getting used to being at mass. And then they're also receiving the graces of being there as well. And so we just wanna offer encouragement, no judgment to parents because we've been in that boat too, that, that it's, it's hard to just meet the corporal needs of your kids. It's hard to meet the, the educational needs of them as well. It's hard to keep your house clean and stay caught up on laundry. And it's hard to even like cook good, healthy meals. And it's hard to keep up with a spiritual life what makes it even harder is when you already have those feelings like, I can't do this, but you absolutely can. And that's why we need to offer that encouragement to parents. That it's okay to be tired. We just don't want you to be stuck and feel like there's no other option. Exactly. That was the phrase that I just remember, you know, after I had my third, it was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do it. You know what I mean? This is all you can think about, you know? And so then it's hard to even think practically and make a good decision, number one, because you're tired. And that's one thing we'll just tell some of our patients, like, okay, you just need to go take a nap. Like it is time for you to like get a babysitter just to take a nap, you know? And um, so that sometimes is one of the first things that just needs to happen. But, you know, in that case, it's 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 leading to the despair of not seeing a way out, you know? Um, and so we know that, you know, the prayer time is important in order to give us that peace. But at the same time, like our call, our importance is to um, our duty as, you know, a wife and a mother, you know, first. And one of our favorite, um, I'll share it um, below, but uh, we like to listen to um, Saints for Kids. It's a little, short little podcast. And um, the one from a few days ago was St. Francis of Rome, and she's a wife. And, and, um, and so the story is just fabulous. Your kids will just love it because it's so true. It's, you know, her husband keeps interrupting her prayer time. And so like, for the fifth time, you know, somebody finally is like, aren't you sick of him just, you know, bugging you, you know, interrupting you in your prayer time? She's like, no, like, this is my vocation. Like, I'm, you know, um, fulfilling my role. This is my call, you know, to, yes, it's good for me to be devout and it's good for me to, you know, have time, but, but, you know, she could do that with love. And then she like gets back to her prayer and opens up her Bible and the scripture that she was trying to read was turned to gold. And, um, you know, it's just like, yes, she said yes in that moment, um, to loving, um, still attempting to pray, still carving out time for prayer, but knowing that like life happens. And, and saints like St. Francis of Rome are so awesome for parents because you recognize that with like St. Gianna Mola or St. Thomas More, St. Zaley Martin, so many of these saints who are parents became saints, not in spite of their vocation mm. as parents, but through their vocation. Oh, you know, St. St. Gianna Mola gave her life out of love for her daughter and saint thomas more had to raise his children as a as a widower and then also took in kin of his like he i think he had 10 kids 
at one point, why is nobody talking about how tired he was? And he was a <laughs> lawyer too. Um, sim similar story with Elizabeth Ann Seton. St. Zaley Martine had a bunch of little girls under her feet while she was running a really successful lace making business. And there were even times where she wrote to her husband saying, you know, I feel as though, you know, like the day is lost and I'm I'll be dead by noon if this keeps up. <laughs> and she was so she was so real about it. And when we realize that when we admit that we're tired parents, we actually open the doors to being able to let God into our hearts and to say, God, I can't do this without you. It's only through your grace. Some of my best received prayers are like the prayers that I've really received answers from were in those moments where I'm like, Jesus, I feel like I can't do this. Or blessed mother, I need you to show me how to be patient because I haven't the faintest idea what I'm doing. And so we want parents to start incorporating those short prayers. We call them passing prayers. Just a quick prayer that you can pray like, St. Anthony, I offer up um, my day for the, the salvation of my children. Or St. Anthony, please remember this wayward soul in your prayers. Um, St. Elizabeth of Portugal, like if you're dealing with a, a family rift or <laughs> St. Elizabeth of Portugal literally stopped a civil war between her husband and her son. And so if your family is going through turmoil, just offer up a quick prayer to St. Elizabeth of Portugal. We have over 30 saints in the prayer book for tired parents that you can turn to in these times of crisis as a parent or in these times of turmoil that can bring you back to the reason why you're doing it. Like we have um, a reflection on St. Therese, speaking of St. Zaley Martin, um, because St. Zaley used to talk about how um, Therese would throw these terrible temper tantrums when she was three years old. And imagine she would that. just imagine that. Yeah. Imagine she that. was a normal three year old and she would throw herself on the floor and writhe around like all is lost. And she still became a saint. And not only did she become a saint, but she became one of the greatest saints in the history of the church, a doctor of the church. And so in this moment, when your kid is melting down and they feel like all is lost and you feel like all is lost, you can just pray in that moment, St. Therese, help me love my child who is destined to become a saint. Help me disciple my child in this moment. Because it's in those times where, you know, you're, you're struggling with your kids where things are really difficult. That's when saints are made. And so you can choose in that moment to respond with love or to, res to respond with impatience and anger and frustration. And it's those little things that parents need to be reminded of. Like when your kid is distracting you from your work during the day or when they're making messes, when they're struggling with their, with their lessons, things like that, when they're fighting with each other, those are all opportunities for you to choose holiness as a parent, but then also for you to disciple your children and to raise them in holiness. And it requires a huge mindset change. Absolutely. I mean, I think the one word that comes to me is humility is like being able to accept where I'm at, you know, recognize where I've made mistakes and being able to look at, you know, where I want to be able to um, grow, you know, towards uh, sainthood, right? And so being able to have that humility and right humor is right in there with humility. So sometimes you just got to step back and laugh at yourself because it's just hilarious what happens some of these days that um, otherwise, you know, you can take it too personally of like, Oh my gosh, there's like jelly on the walls and there's <laughs> stuff everywhere. It's just like, how did this even happen? And, um, you know, uh, my, you know, husband is quick to remind me, St. Don Bosco, we love reading him with the kids. They just love his stories. But, um, you know, St. Don Bosco would, would, you know, praise God and thank God that the boys are like, you know, tussling on the floor and, and messing with each other and stuff. It's like, thank goodness they're playing with each other. This is the number one, how boys kind of, you know, work it out. But, um, he's like, you know, they're playing with each other. They're not out doing other things, right? This is, um, you know, for their holiness too. Yeah. And sometimes you just, you have to have the, the humor. Like you said, we have a reflection on St. Lawrence who uh, was burned, uh, burned to death on a grill. And his final last words reportedly were, turn me over, I'm done on this side. Mm -hmm. And if we can have that humor too, we've got a prayer for, um, a prayer when everything is going up in flames. And sometimes that has to be the prayer that you pray. But like you said, it, it opens you up to the virtue of humility and being able to recognize I can't do this on my own. Absolutely. And I haven't the faintest idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Yep. And I think, you know, it brings to like, it ultimately is a choice. We have a choice at each moment to, you know, not only forgive ourselves for maybe the mistakes that we've made in the past, but then, you know, to look and see that we do have a choice, you know, in those moments to respond, you know, with charity, with kindness, sometimes, you know, with discipline too, um, and be able to move forward and, and have that hope of knowing that we can get there, but we cannot do it on our own. And I think that's the, um, the risk that we take and what we'll kind of talk about. Um, you know, we're excited uh, to have Debbie um, at our retreat night coming up um, 
and it's called the the Tired Moms Retreat Night. So that'll be April um, 14th from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, Sacred Heart of Jesus uh, Catholic Church um, up in Anna, Ohio. So um, we'll be excited to hear you know more from Debbie. Uh, but we want to be able to talk about those practical steps for you, you know, individually and for your family, um, because really looking at um, taking despair and turning it into hope. And how you know how can we turn this around? And how can we laugh <laughs> and and bring in some humor, you know, into our lives uh, too? And then um, Aaron will be excited to discuss um, some functional medicine strategies too, because what right. if the fatigue is beyond? I know I'm sleeping better. What is it? What if it's beyond, you know, just um, the lack of sleep? Um, what are some other things that we need to, um, you know, discuss on on a level of, of fatigue and exhaustion? Yeah, yeah. So we'll be we'll be bringing in some of those things as well. And I, I think what I really love about this retreat night and and about uh, Debbie's book too is the idea that, you know, we we all need to start somewhere. You know, and so depending on where you are, you know, maybe you maybe you haven't made it back to mass yet. Maybe you and your family, you know, you say, "Oh my gosh, I have a two-year-old. How could I possibly get to mass?" Or, or I have a one-year-old, or I just gave birth, or you know, whatever your story is. And and that's what we really love, um, just about this book and about this retreat night is we all need to start somewhere. So. So I think it's really important for people to understand that it doesn't matter whether you're somebody who has a calling or is feeling like I need to attend mass every day, or if you're somebody who's like, how could I possibly even attend mass period, right? And so that's what I really love about your book, Debbie, and I'm really thankful for that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background as far as you know being a mom and, and you and your husband, and um, were you always this devout? Were you always somebody who had a calling you know, to, to attend daily mass? Honestly, we have grown a lot over the past couple of years. I was just talking to my husband last night about how um, Dave, with where he is now in his spiritual journey, is not something that he ever could have sustained several years ago. Or like Dave, as being the father of three with a fourth on the way, uh, is so much stronger and so much better equipped than Dave as a first time dad. Sure. And part of that just comes with having more kids and figuring out the routine, but also we have had to, uh, we've had to come to Jesus moment basically. And, and the, the time that it hit the hardest was right after the pandemic where we were recognizing that we can't really be lukewarm about our faith anymore. We can't just go through the motions of being Catholic and can't just do Sunday mass. Um, even after working for EWTN for a decade now um, and, and growing, growing little by little, we still were not doing enough. And we realized it was a lack of love of God. Just like I said, not loving him the way that he should be loved. And we realized that if we wanted to raise our children to be saints, then we had to be more deliberate about what we were doing, how we were teaching them, the things that we were allowing in our homes, uh, in our home, because otherwise the world was going to steal our children from us. And we recognized that with some of the shows that they were watching, some of the characters that they were latching onto and becoming basically obsessed with. And we didn't want that to happen. So it required, um, it required a very deliberate shift for us. And this has been something that's been going on for several years now. And what we recognized too is that the more we started going to daily mass and going to adoration and going to confession more frequently too, so we're trying to go between every two to four weeks, you receive graces that help you become a better parent and bringing mm -hmm. your kids to mass, even if they're receiving a spiritual communion because they can't receive Jesus in the Eucharist yet, it's changing them and it's changing our whole family. We've changed the culture of our home and the way that we talk to each other, but it wasn't overnight. It's something that has been happening for several years now. And isn't that the way our, our journey toward heaven is supposed to be? We're supposed to be sure. getting holier every day. Dave always says, you know, it would be a, a gift to get to old age. But he says the responsibility of that is that you better be sure that you are good and holy by the time you are 60, 70, 80 years old. Because at that point, you don't really have very many excuses. You should be a saint by the time you get to the end of your life. And that's really what we're striving toward. And we've seen a huge difference with our six-year-old. She used to be afraid of going to confession because she thought that she was going to be getting in trouble for the sins that she committed. But then just last night, she was telling me that she wants to have a squeaky clean soul for Jesus. Aww. And she said, can I go to confession every day? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I don't know if you need to go every day, but like every two weeks is great. And she's like, good. Well, I do want to receive the Eucharist every day. And I'm like, how can I refuse? Like when your six-year-old yeah. says, I want to receive the Eucharist every day. 
you better step up as a parent and you better do everything that you can to help meet that need for your child. And it's so encouraging. The more we do it, the more we enjoy doing it. And it's not really, it's not really so much out of obligation anymore as it is truly out of love that you really grow in this desire to love God more, but it's been a process for us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think what I most relate to just as we're talking today is I was once that mom with like all the kids as if I'm not still the mom with all the kids, but, um, you know, who at church, you know, it's one of them's climbing under the pew, the other one's climbing over the pew and the other one's in my arms while I'm trying to tackle the other two, you know, or, or whatever. And in that moment, it's like, there's no way I can do anything else right now. There's no way I can't add anything else on. I can't do anything differently. Um, but when you take a step back, and you start to realize like, okay, this is a journey. This doesn't mean that tomorrow I need to be doing all the things, but I can start maybe adding one thing. You know, what can I add? What can I add? And, and in those moments, I'm going to tell you, the best thing to add is some quiet prayer time <laughs> because Amen. that's what you need. Amen. But but really, you know, just understanding that it, it's a journey. I love what you're saying about that. And I think it does allow us to have some hope in those moments. You know, we love uh, making fun of me, especially, but, you know, of being that mom that's like, I've had it up to here, you know, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, in those moments, it's like, okay, you know, what can I be doing? And I love just some of your examples. So I'm really excited for a retreat night that we have coming up. Um, I'm really excited for moms of any stage in that, in that faith process, whether again, whether you're just starting out again, whether you're somebody who's, you know, already a daily mass attendee, we, we can add and we can look and we can see, you know, how can we add this to our life? And Gus wants to add something too, I'm sure. Down yeah. There. And, and I mean, that's the other thing. So like Gus is a baby. He makes noises. That's what babies do. And like right. toddlers, they climb under pews and right. four-year-olds sit during mass and whisper very loudly, is mass over yet? Why is he talking? so long like they do those things and yeah, and so we also it. have to remind ourselves too as moms that it's okay for our kids to to wiggle in the pews it's okay for them to not sit perfectly still while we're praying the rosary that god fills in the blanks and sure. you know we can we can invite their guardian angels to pray with us and ask them to be with us as we go to holy communion but we need to we need to just give ourselves a little bit of grace as parents and recognize that the journey is for us and it's also for our kids too. Absolutely. And they are looking to us, you know, and this is the hard thing for me because it's kind of accepting like where I'm at. I'm like, oh, I am responding with so much fear or anger or, um, you know, relying on myself rather than looking to God for help. You know, it's like they're a mirror of us and it's like, okay, God, I need help, you know, and they're looking for me, you know, to me to be the one that is like, no, it's okay. You're going to get there. You know, one of our favorite um, phrases, um, you know, Victress comes from the title of Mary, Queen and Victress of Schoenstatt. And, um, and Schoenstatt, it's, um, you know, a child of Mary shall never perish. And it's like that trust that like when we, you know, entrust our children, we entrust, um, you know, to, to Mary, to Jesus, like they're going to get us there, you know? And so like, can I have that trust in every moment that despite, you know, what happens, even myself, when I fall, that I, if I continue to stay faithful, if I continue to show up, like God will get us there. And it's the same way, you know, like thinking about, you know, like last year, my son hated handwriting, you know, and now this year he's doing phenomenal and he loves it. You know, it's the same thing. Like, you know, okay, can I trust? We will get there. And I think as soon as we start to have that fear or I can't do it, or this is not working, we stop like actually thinking. Um, and it clouds just our judgment to be able to like step back and look at, you know, the world and be able to make practical steps. Um, and that's why it's helpful. You know, I love like your book is, is for tired parents, you know? Um, and I think the one thing that, you know, if we can say the devil will try to step in and try to separate you and your husband in those moments to try to like, attack each other and rather see no like we're trying to do this together and it's going to be a natural normal thing to try to separate us um, but can we look at this together you know we're really struggling with you know meals right now like how can we have a family dinner and whatever the thing might be and and unite you know us between our marriage too and then how does that play out you know with our children 
And that works so perfectly for every part of your life too, from, from your spiritual life to how you choose to raise and educate your children to the meals that you're preparing, how you're going to make time to exercise and recreate as a family. It, recognizing the graces of the sacrament of marriage are so important because you, you can't do it without God, of course. You also can't do it without a spouse who is going to work with you because if you're working against each other, then you're not going to make any progress. You'll be moving backwards, but it's so important to get, to get your spouse on board too. And I've just got to say, I'm so thankful for Dave because he is, he is a go-getter. He is a lifelong learner and he doesn't want to settle for anything less than his best. And he's still learning too. You know, he has a, a degree in healthcare and he's still learning too about what we can do to do better for our bodies so that we're not tired, what we can do for our, our minds and our souls and what we can do to help uh, break some bad habits that could be affecting our kids later on. So I'm glad that we get to incorporate the body, mind, and the soul into our retreat night because, you know, how can you how can you focus on dedicating time to prayer or practicing patience if you're if you're hungry, like if you're not getting enough protein or certain nu nutrients throughout the day, or if you're chronically fatigued because you've got some underlying issue, how is that affecting your ability to give God His due, not just in your prayer life but also you know using the body that he gave you to serve him, to serve your family and to serve the world. They're inseparable. I love that. I think that's why from our perspective at Victress, and that's why it's so important to hit the big three, you know, body, mind, and soul. I mean, it's just it. You can't, you can't make the triangle without one of the sides of the triangle. And so, um, I, I, again, I, I can't just stress enough just how excited I am. I feel like this is just long overdue for us to, first of all, have this conversation. We're just really excited for the book that you guys put together, um, but we're also really excited uh, for the retreat night. And and I think, you know, again, I just cannot say enough or stress enough just the idea that, you know, this is for all tired parents. This is not just for folks who are, you know, on this end of the spectrum. Oh, I'm already doing the daily mass thing or it's, it's for all of us. Right. And so I'm, I'm really excited and, and we can't wait to have you and, and Gus is excited too. <laughs> yes. And as, as much as we can't wait to hear more stories about all the interviews you've done, Krista Panic and St. Gianna Mula's daughter and, and on down the list, um, you know, through working through EWTN, it's going to be great to hear your, your expertise, but really this is about, um, you guys, um, the listeners, we are so excited for you to have that joy. Like you can have joy, um, as a mom and in your role, um, whatever that might be. So, um, please bring your friends and, um, we look forward to um, seeing you there again. The, um, link to sign up is victorishealth.com slash retreat. So you can sign up directly there. Again, it's April 14th, 6 to 9 PM in Anna, Ohio. And, um, yeah. Anything that you want to share? Just want to remind parents, you can do it. Sometimes we need a little bit of help and it's okay to ask for help, but we absolutely believe that you can do it. You were made for this. God called you to this vocation because he knew that this was the way that you were going to become holy. And he gives you the intellect and the will to participate in that designing of your life of holiness and your life of wellness as well. So this is going to be the great start of a great journey toward holiness together. And I'm so thankful that I get to work alongside both of you. Yes. Well, thanks so much, Debbie. Yep. And why don't we end in prayer? Absolutely. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We just lift up um, all the intentions of our listeners, all those that are struggling, especially all the moms that feel stuck, all those that are just so desire to serve you and to love you. We offer up um, our families to you, Lord, and we ask that you would um, bless those that are in need of um, peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Saint Gianna, pray, pray for, for us. us.